Hey everyone. So in this video, I'd like to continue talking about rational exponents. So in the last video, we ended on this idea that taking uh, some number to an exponent that's a fraction, well, that just meant applying uh, the denominator as some sort of nth root and the numerator as some sort of nth power afterwards, right? So maybe even uh, before we really tackle some problems that, that, that use this idea, maybe we can remind ourselves this, this sort of nth root idea. So, you know, last video we said that, that 8 to the 1 third, right, we, we noticed that when we cube this, our exponent rules told us that this needed to be 8 to the 1, right, because when we take a power of a power, uh, we multiply their exponents. And so, so whatever this number, 8 to the 1 third, was, or whatever it is, uh, it needs to cube to 8. And so this really suggested to us that, that 8 to the 1 third needs to be 2, because 2 cubed is 8. And, and in general, uh, taking a to the 1 over n power, and so in this case it was 1 over 3, uh, and we, we had to take the cube root, this meant taking uh, the, the nth root of a. This is asking us uh, what number raised to the nth power results in the number a. We got a question mark here. Okay, so so that's that's what this nth power means, or, or sorry, one over nth power is. It's it's really just the nth root, and we're saying in this above idea that if I take you know, a more general fraction with not just a numerator of one, but a numerator of, let's say, m. Well, in the end of the last video, we said that we can split apart that that m over n, that fraction, we can really interpret as the, the product of, of two simpler fractions. Uh, a fraction of one over n, which, which we know how to compute as an exponent now, and a fraction of m over one, which is really just the same as m, which we also know how to compute as an exponent. And so if we split this up using our, our exponent rule, our power exponent, power of a power exponent rule, then we see that we can apply the, the nth root to our value a and the nth power, and that's the same as taking the m over n exponent of a. Okay, so let's do some concrete examples. So here, if I look at the, the number negative 32, and I take this quantity to the 2 fifths power, well, our above idea is telling us that this is, this is the same as applying the 1 fifth power first and the second power afterwards, right? Because we know that 2 times 1 fifth is 2 fifths. And so these two expo these two powers, uh, they're they're equivalent, right? But but this idea is helpful because we can compute the one fifth power of negative thirty two without too much trouble. This is asking us what number, when we take it, raise it to the fifth power, gives us negative thirty two. And so this ought to be an even number, and, and you know exponents usually make things grow really large really fast, and so this number ought to be really small if it's if taken to the fifth power is negative 32. And so let's try the number 2, or actually let's try the number negative 2, if we're going to get a negative 32 out. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, times negative 2 is 8, times negative 2 is... Oh, and well, negative 8 it should have been, and positive 16, then negative 32. So it's really on the inside. 
It's negative 32 to the 1 fifth. That's, that's negative 2. And then applying this exponent afterwards, the square gives us a positive 4. And so here, this, this 2 is the same as this one. And this 5 is the same as this one. Okay, and, and we could have done this in reverse order. We could have squared negative 32 and taken the one-fifth power of that, but I don't, I don't really know one-fifth powers of, you know, really, really, really large numbers, especially not negative 32 squared. I think this, this approach, this uh, sequencing is, is, is the simpler one. Okay, so see if you could apply this idea to the following examples. So, uh, simplify. One, or 125 to the two-thirds power and 16 over 81 to the three-fourths power. Actually, maybe just to go a little further, um, let me ask you to take 16 to the negative three-halves power. Okay, so uh, yeah, pause the video, give these problems a try. Uh, I'll talk about them in a moment. So 125 to the two thirds power, this is the same as 125 to the, to the one third. And then afterwards applying that square of two. Okay, and so what's, what's 125 to the one-third. Um, I think we've seen this once already, but but it feels like the right candidate is, is 5. So let's try. So 5 times 5 is 25. And to multiply that by 5 one more time, well, five ten, or, one, or 25 times 4 is 100. And then another 25 tacked on gives us the 125. So, so this really is 5 in the parentheses, but then we still have to apply that 2 that square, and we end up with 25. And 25 is, is 125 to the 2 thirds power. We apply the cube root and then we square. Okay, and this, in this next example, um, you know, this might be hard to parse uh, at a glance, but if we remember our exponent rules, of when we take a fraction to a power, it's the same as taking the numerator to that power and then the denominator to that power, this becomes a much more manageable problem. Okay, so what happens when we take 16 to the 3 fourths power? Well, let me think of it as 16 to the 1 fourth. And then afterwards, cubing it. So that's just the numerator. We still have to think about the denominator. This is 81 to the one-fourth, and then again, afterwards, we should cube it. And so 16 to the one-fourth, well, that's asking us what number raised to the power of four is 16. That's, that's two, and although negative two works when we're taking uh, an even root, we're, we're just going to pick out the, the positive number that does the job. So in this case, it's positive 2, although negative 2 also works. And then 81 to the 1 fourth power. We saw this in the last video, that, that 3 to the power of 4 gives us 81. And so 81 to the 1 fourth is 3. And we still have to cube this as well. And so 2 cubed, uh, that's 2 times 2 times 2, 2, 4. 8, 3 times 3 times 3, that's 9 times 3 is 27. And so that's the final answer. Notice that nothing reduces, although you know the same kind of things are happening in the numerator and denominator, uh, they don't share any common factor. There's no cancellation that can be done.
Okay, what about this last example? Uh, so that negative exponent is telling us to take the reciprocal of the base. And so maybe let's do that first. So let's think of this as uh, 1 over 16, and we're raising this to the power 3 halves. And so next we can take the numerator to that power 3 halves, and then 16 to that power 3 halves, and so that from our examples earlier tells us that we would take the 1 half power and then cube it afterwards. And then note that, that taking a number like 1 and then taking it to the 3 halves power, uh, well taking the number 1 to the 3 halves power is still going to give us 1, right? The square root of 1 is, is 1, and then cubing that is still 1. 1 to any power uh, should, get, should get 1 out. Okay, 16 to the 1 half. That's what number squared gives us 16. That's 4. And then we ought to cube that. Now what's 4 cubed? Well, 4 squared is 16, as we just saw. Um, but 4 cubed, so multiplying 16 one more time by 4, gives us uh, 16, 32, 48, 64. That's, that's 16 times 4. So here this gives us 1 over 64. So again, I can't emphasize enough that you know we had a negative exponent there, but our result is a positive number. That negative exponent doesn't do anything but tell us to take the reciprocal or divide. Okay. Let's let's do one more. Yeah, let's do one more example. Let's take. Uh, actually, let's do two more examples. Let's take negative twenty-seven and raise this to the negative four-thirds. And let's take an expression. Let's deal with 81x to the eighth y cubed raised to the one-fourth. So I'd encourage you to, to pause the video and, and give these two examples a try. That, you know, the, the second one's a little bit different, but you know, it's applying the same exponent rules, really, that we've been, we've been learning about. Um, yeah, so give it a go, and then we'll talk about it soon enough. Okay, so here, you know, we can do the same thing that we did above with this negative exponent. We can apply it first, uh, telling us to take the reciprocal of this, this base. In other words, we've got negative uh, 27. The reciprocal of that is 1 over negative 27. I'm going to think about it as... Uh, just the negative number 1 over 27. And then we ought to, we still want to apply the, the fourth power and the cube root. And so this tells us that we've got negative 1 over, actually I think it might be clear if we, if we put the negative sign in the denominator. Right, so remember that negative signs, uh, if I've got a fraction and there's some negative multiples floating around in the numerator of the denominator, uh, so maybe it's clear if I say it like this, that, that negative a over b, it's the same thing as negative a over b, that's the same thing as a over negative b, and we can pick and choose which one uh, best suits our needs in the process of simplifying expressions or, or quantities. And so, in this case, I think actually that negative 27, the negative sign in the denominator might be beneficial. Okay, so next we take, uh, we take 1 to the 4 thirds power, which we, you know, we, we've argued is, is the same as 1. And then we take negative 27, right, the entire denominator, to that 4 thirds power. And so here, we can apply the, the one-third power first from the denominator of 3, and then the, the fourth power afterwards. And so this gives us 1 over 
Well, what's the one-third power of negative 27? That's negative 3. And then when we take this negative 3 to the fourth power, well, we get uh, negative 3 multiplying by negative 3 again gives us 9. And once more gives us negative 27 like we just saw. And then once more gives us positive 81. So this is 1 over positive 81. Okay, well, let's, let's do this last example here. So 81 times x to the 8th y cubed. And we're raising this group to the 1 4th power. We'll remember that, that taking a group to the 1 4th power, more uh, specifically taking a product to the 1 4th power, tells us to raise everything that's being multiplied in that product to that 1 4th power. This is 81 to the 1 4th. Afterwards, multiply with x to the 8th raised to the 1 4th. And then multiply with y cubed raised to the 1 4th. And so 81 to the 1 4th. Now we've seen a few times now, and actually we can kind of see from our previous example, that's 3, right? We saw that negative 3 to the 4th power is 81. And so negative 3 to the 4th power giving us 81 tells us that that's one number that that to the 4th power is 81, but, but that also tells us that positive 3 to the 4th power is 81, and then 81 to the 1 4th is a positive number raised to the 4th power that gives us 81. Uh, next, x to the 8th raised to the 1 4th, our exponent rules tell us that when we have a power to a power, we multiply those exponents. And so what's 8 times 1 4th? Well, 8 times 1 4th, multiplying by 1 4th is like dividing by 4. And so this is 8 divided by 4, that's, that's 2 in the exponent of x. Next we've got y to the, to the 3 fourths, or sorry, y to the 3 raised to the 1 fourth, and, and that tells us we've got y to the 3 fourths when we multiply those exponents. And it doesn't really get much nicer than that. There's not such a nice way to write this. Um, I mean, you can split this up and kind of think of it as a mixed number in the exponent, as uh, y to the 1 plus y to the 1 fourth. I mean, th there's a few different ways to interpret this. Maybe let me write one more way. This is a perfectly fine answer, but this is also the same as 3x squared times y times y to the 1 fourth, um, though I would prefer this example. But sometimes it's, it's, it can be beneficial to, to think of your expression like this. So let me write one one last way. Hopefully this doesn't add too much confusion. Um, another way you can write this, if you feel like you prefer it, um, is 3x squared times... <coughs> actually, the way you could possibly write, write what you have here is, is y cubed the fourth root of y cubed. So that might be uh, a nice way to write it sometimes, though, though oftentimes it's, it's preferable to use uh, exponents as, as opposed to, to square root signs, square root symbols. Okay, so I'll include more examples like this in, in the activity. Um, but let's, let's go over one last idea for this video. So, you know, we can, we can use these ideas to help us solve equations, you know, in another kind of class of equations. For example, if I gave you the equation x cubed is equal to 8, and I asked you to solve this equation, well, here this is asking us what number cubed gives us 8. And, and there's only one number that does the job. Uh, really, x needs to be 2. And, and how can we, what's you know, one way of, of seeing this algebraically without having to be able to just, just see it and, and guess it correctly? Uh, well, 
you know, we want to get x alone. And that exponent of 3 is kind of blocking our way. And so one thing we can do to get rid of that exponent of 3, you know, if, if x cubed is the same as 8, now I can, I can take the one third power of both sides. And here we know that uh, this would be the same thing on the left hand side as x to the 3 times that one third. Right? Raising a power to a power is just multiplying their exponents. And then next we know a to the one third is, is 2. And well, x to the 3 times 1 third, that's just x to the 1. And so x needs to be 2, uh, like we said, like we said a moment ago. And so, you know, we can kind of use this idea to, 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 solve, to solve equations involving uh, a single instance of x raised to some power. If there's more, more terms with the variable x raised to different powers, um, things might get challenging, but if we, if we can write x as, you know, a single, uh, if we can see our equation with as, as containing a single power of x, then, then we can solve it by sort of undoing that exponent. In other words, taking both sides to uh, the reciprocal of that exponent. Right. And so maybe to say this more generally, to solve x to the n is equal to k, you want to raise both sides to the power 1 over n. And so let me ask you to, to solve the following equa equations. So solve uh, x to the fifth plus 1 is equal to 100,001. Uh, x to the 3 halves is equal to, to 8. And 2x to the 4 thirds minus 1 is equal to uh, 31. So see if you can try and solve these two, or these three different equations. Okay, so looking at this first equation, you know, it isn't exactly in the form that we, we see in this, this note off to the right. It doesn't, it's not exactly set up to, for us to take the one nth power of both sides, but, but really the only difference is that we have this addition of one. And so let's subtract that away from both sides. Getting that x to the fifth alone. And then I could take the fifth root of both sides, or the one fifth power of both sides. And this just gives us x on the left. And on the right, well, what number raised to the fifth power gives us 100,000? Well, 10 feels like a good candidate. And so let, let's convince ourselves that that might be true. So 10 times 10, in other words, 10 to the power of 2, that's 100. Cubed is 1,000. Uh, fourth is raised to the fourth is 10,000, and raised to the fifth is 100,000. So this checks out. And so this is the only number that does the job. Um, and, and so this kind of illustrates also that, that we ought to, you know, just like when we're solving equations, linear equations, and we want to get x by itself, we, you know, we added any, uh, any numbers or any, any variables to both sides to get sort of all the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other. And then afterwards we multiplied or divided any numbers necessary to get uh, the coefficients, to get rid of the coefficients. Um, and, and that order of, of adding and subtracting first and then multiplying and dividing, those sort of in, in the reverse of order of operations, right? And, and so whenever we're solving equations, um, that's typically the, the approach is, is you want to do things in a reverse order of operations order. So here we've got x 
raised to the power of five, that's, that's telling us we got an exponent of x, and then we've got some addition here. So we want to do the subtraction first, peel away the subtraction, and then peel away the exponentiation. And, and we see in the later example out here that we've got some subtraction, we've got some multiplication, we've got some exponentiation, and that's telling us that we want to add away the one first, divide away the two, and then undo this four-thirds power in that order. Okay, let's do the next one. So x to the three halves is equal to eight. Well, one thing I can do to get rid of this exponent of three halves is raise both sides to the two thirds. And so it's not exactly of the form, you know, x to some whole number of power, but but if if I think of two th or three halves as, as n, the reciprocal of that, one over n, is is two thirds. And so I want to apply two thirds power to both sides. And why is that? Well, it's, it's a lot like when we try and uh, undo a multiplication or undo a coefficient to both sides of an equation. Of uh, it's like when we want to undo a coefficient of, of two thirds from x. Right, I've got something like two thirds. Actually, maybe let me do a different number so it doesn't get mixed up with what we're doing. If I have something like uh, 5 sevenths x is equal to, to 8, well, what would I do to get rid of this? Oh, sorry about that. It's too easy to accidentally tab out. What would I do to get x by itself? I would multiply by 7 over 5 to both sides. Right, because we get 35 over 35, in other words, 1, right, any number divided by itself is 1, giving us just one set of x. And this would be uh, 56 over 5. Well, in this case, when we take a power of a power, we multiply those exponents, and, and 3 halves times 2 thirds, that's just 1, giving us just x, x to the 1 is equal to 8 to the 2 thirds. And so 8 to the 2 thirds, let me rewrite that as 8 to the 1 third squared. And 8 to the 1 third we know is, is 2. And then squaring that is gives us 4. Okay, so if I plugged in 4 into this equation, and raise it to the 3 halves power, I would get 8, right? Because uh, 4 to the 3 halves power tells me I would need to take the square root, getting 2, and then cubing that, well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. This would do the job. Okay, so one more, one more here. Uh, so, you know, we already kind of talked through this, this example. Oh, I apologize if I uh, didn't get this, this thing in pink down here in the bottom left corner of the screen. Uh, in the video, I, I've sort of recropped my video and I, I've uh, to, to sort of take away the, the things off the whiteboard. Um, my apologies if, if I mistakenly uh, left, got it out of the screen. Okay, so let's let's work through this last example. So let's, like we said, we want to undo uh, what's happening to x in reverse order of operations order. We want to add or subtract first. So let's add the one, giving us two x to the four thirds is equal to thirty-two, and then let's divide out the 2, giving us x to the 4 thirds is equal to 16. And then lastly, we want to apply the reciprocal power. Right, so here this gives us, when we apply the, the reciprocal power of 3 fourths to both sides, this is telling us to take the the one-fourth power of 16, or in other words, what number raised to the power of 
Six, four gives us 16, and that's, that's two. But then we still need to cube it. giving us x is equal to 8. And so this is where we, we want to uh, actually pause and be a little extra careful. So here we, we took the 1 fourth power of both sides. And earlier we said that, that you know, Actually, let me rephrase this. You know, we, we took the one fourth power of both sides, and that's asking us what number raised to the power four gives us the 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 base, the, the inside number, or in this case, sixteen. And here we're saying that that two does the job because two to the fourth is sixteen. But but we we also said that there's another number that does the job that we we kind of left out. Right, negative two also does the job, and and when we're trying to solve an equation. This really means find all solutions to the equation. Maybe let's check. Let's check that 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 negative eight actually works in this equation too. So let's, let's check that, that negative 8, x is equal to negative 8, satisfies the equation. So if we plug in negative 8 and raise this to the 4 thirds power and then take away 1, do we get 31? Well, negative 8 to the one-third power, right, applying this, this exponent of one-third gives us negative 2, right, because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 again is negative 8, and then we take it to the fourth power, right, afterwards, well, that gives us uh, negative 2 to the 4th power is 16. And that gives us 32 minus 1. Does this equal 31? Well, well it does. Right, so 8, I would encourage you to check in, you know, for the same reasons it you know, works out. But, but negative 8 also works in this example. And that's because there, you know, when we take the 4th the root of something, Although we choose the positive answer, there are two numbers that, that satisfy uh, that relationship. There are two numbers that do the job. Taking, uh, how should I phrase this? I mean, let me say that, that if n, the exponent of, of, of x, Um, if n, and then sometimes if we're dealing with a fraction exponent like we did in this case, so if the numerator is, is even, then we need to consider both solutions, um, plus or minus our solution, right? Here we, we, we're saying that x is equal to 8, but we also see that minus 8 works, right? So I should tack on here that x is equal to plus or minus 8. And that's really because of this, this fourth power here. This fourth power here. That, that even exponent really it forgets about negative signs. right? If I take anything and I raise it to an even power, it's going to forget about negative signs. And so negative numbers can also work for, for that value of x. Or for, for this equation. Okay, so hopefully this isn't getting too, too lost or too, too confusing. Um, really, the, the big idea you know, is kind of uh, 
a little niche idea. Um, the big idea is that if I have an exponential equation like so, I need to apply the reciprocal power to both sides to solve this equation. And I'm just adding on this uh, to this that, that if n is even, then we need to consider two solutions as opposed to just one, because uh, there's a negative value of x that, that also works. Okay. Um, let me think. All right, let's, let's end the video here. Um, I've posted an activity. I please, please take a look at it. Um, in the next video, we'll, we'll talk about that activity very briefly.